Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our 14th QPS talk time. Um, this topic is on engaging staff and quality and patient safety, and we're going to introduce our panel in a few moments. Just to say, if you're tuning in today, you can also follow the conversation online on Twitter, or X as it's now called, and we use at QPS talk time is the main handle, and we'll pop into the chat some of the Twitter handles for some of the panelists here today so that you can follow them. And I do think it's worthwhile following them if you are on Twitter because they've got some really good information and resources on an ongoing basis and it's worthwhile uh, worthwhile linking in with them. We also have the talk times of past episodes on our HSE YouTube channel and that's the national national QPS YouTube channel. So all of our past QPS talk times are there. Everything from psychological safety to safer surgeries. There is a, a real mix of topics there so it's worthwhile to take a look at those. So just as with all of our topics, they all link back into the patient safety strategy. And this particular topic around engagement taps into two of the key commitments, empowering and engaging patients and empowering and engaging staff to improve patient safety. Um, and in particular, you'll see there, there's a lot listed under the engaging staff piece, but ensuring staff are effectively listened to, communicated with and fully involved and engaged is probably one of the primary pieces around the engagement bit. So from our perspective, the techniques that we're going to talk about today, liberating structures, are huge addition to your toolbox of techniques that you use when you are engaging with staff. And it can be any sort of a conversation. It can be strategic planning for next year. It can be a particular quality and patient safety issue that you're working on. Um, all of those different things that you're sort of saying, okay, we have a problem here that we might need to fix from a QPS perspective. These are really, really useful um, tools to be able to access. And there is a huge evidence base around this. I won't go into it today, but we will pop in to the slides later on some of the papers that you can access if you're interested in engagement and the evidence around it. Everything from patient mortality to improved clinical care reductions and hospital admissions. There's a lot of evidence around why this is important and why conversations around quality and patient safety are important. So this particular session, and I just see there that there's a lot of people still coming in. So um, just we'll take you through the session in terms of today's talk time, we're delighted to welcome one of the co-founders of Liberating Structures, Keith McCandless. Um, and uh, thank you very much for joining us today, Keith. Um, we have Professor Rob Cunney, who's a consultant microbiologist um, in Q QI and clinical safety lead. And we have Matthew Mazet, systems convener extraordinaire, as Keith has labelled him. But Matthew works with the Q community as a community manager and supporting members of the UK and Ireland in their learning and improvement work. And also we're joined by Bernie Austin and Bernie is a programme lead with a PMO and she's worked across the health services from nursing to project management to um, directors of nursing and manager of older person services. Um, and she's going to bring a challenge that she has. It's a case study um, based on some of the experience that she's had over the years to one of our um, uh, exercises today and it gives us an opportunity to really work through how we might see how these liberating structures could actually support us in our work um, and we're also going to hear basically how to hear and observe and participate as I said in a sequence of liberating structures and it's designed really to tap into the wisdom in the room very often there's a perception that we need to always go outside for knowledge or experience that's going to influence or inspire us and really a lot of it is about having conversations with your colleagues and with the people that are using our health services it changes the dynamic. So welcome to our panel. And um, I think I've talked for long enough now, so we'll go on to the next section if that's okay. And what I'm gonna do is hand over to Keith, who's gonna take us through a little bit of an introduction here. So thank you. Oh my Juanita, uh, I've never heard you speak so rapidly. <laughs> uh, uh, again, just thank you for including me and I'm the, gonna give the something like a, a pre-ramble uh, to the work we'll do together. And even now, before we really get started, uh, your voice, Liberating Structures is all about including your voice and shaping what happens next. And here, it's gonna be with your fingers in chat. Uh, so if you're listening, uh, I'd also encourage you to use your voice uh, through your fingers and there'll be multiple opportunities to uh, share your wisdom. And really, we're all here to help Bernie uh, a little bit, I hope, that's the goal. Um, so there's a little bit of a deliberate irony with liberating structures. We're, we're going to liberate with, with structure and I feel privileged to be with, uh, Rob, uh, Matthew, Bernie, and Juanita to, to do this, uh, together, share a little bit with you. And, um, there's a repertoire 
And this is a repertoire that came out of uh, field work over 20 years uh, with a colleague. And it's been adopted, uh, adapted uh, by people all over the world. And today we're going to point to or use a few of them, the ones with red dots here. And each is designed again to uh, shape next steps. Uh, their protocols or methods to shape next steps uh, uh, together, and they unleash everyone. Uh, the agenda kind of moves through uh, three activities. A mad tea party, which you're, you will be invited to use your fingers for that. Uh, the wise fish, our group of panelists, uh, opportunity to think about uh, what you have the discretion and opportunity, opportunity to do with 15% uh, solutions. And we'll uh, close the session. That's where we're going. Uh, and just for a minute, uh, there's two, two components to liberating structures, what they do, the reason they exist, and maybe why they matter. They'll help us work at the top of our intelligence, uh, really include every voice, um, and we'll be wise together. And then they also create the opportunity or give you a choice to replace the unwitting ways. And most of them are unwitting because we've inherited them from hundreds of years ago, uh, the practices, the everyday things we accept that exclude, stifle, and over-control. So this is what they do. And I'm trying to match uh, Juanita's speed here. <laughs> it's nearly impossible. It is impossible, but a worthy goal. Uh, there are principles underneath, and you're gonna get these materials if you want them. Uh, they'll be available to you. So you can look at these in more detail, but we uh, have a set of principles that support the methods in the field. And today, I think uh, we are firmly working with one of them, and it's called Amplify Freedom and Responsibility. That's, I think that's what's going to come out. Out of the 10, there's one that we're going to uh, go a little bit uh, deeper into. Uh, so this particular approach, um, after this session, if you don't already know the liberating structures, we're using it. You, you should be able to copy it so it's expertless. It's focused on getting results, hopefully for Bernie, a, a little bit of uh, next steps that help her. Uh, it'll be fast, too fast for being comfortable at some points. It's seriously fun, includes everybody, uh, could work for hundreds and hundreds of people or two, <coughs> one, uh, it spreads itself and it's modular. Each piece can be put in different order uh, and each one has a specific invitation um, today, uh, Juanita and I, and we're mostly gonna make the invitations to you. There's a, you're invited to participate. Uh, there's specific group sizes. In this case, the wise, wise fish in a minute will be uh, featured. Um, there's space and material and a sequence and an allocation of time. And we call that the, the DNA underneath uh, the life, uh, what gives life to each liberating structure. And they're uh, made available through Creative Commons, so there's no no barriers uh, to this. You you can use them all you want, you can share them, but they're not uh, commercial. They're not for sale, and you can't protect them. Uh, but they're there for everyone. All right. Last thing. Um, this is an example of the simplest expression of this DNA that what's underneath. Uh, it's called one, two, four, all. So first you, then in a pair, and then a group of four, and then all together. Now, what do you, what do you suggest? You're going to have equal time to uh, talk about it. Uh, it. Starts with you as an individual. The groups progress uh, to getting the wisdom of the whole crowd. And there's a very specific sequence. There is structure. <laughs> it's so simple sometimes it's hard to see but that's what we mean by structure what's on this slide and um this activity i think juanita is going to get us started on and uh, it's called uh, mad tea and the fundamental purpose of it is to generate a little bit of confusion and a little bit of enthusiasm so we call that confusiasm uh, <laughs> not in the eastern religion no, no, I, I, I like it. I think I'm going to have to adopt that. Um, but I will speak a little bit more slowly for this, and I should always preface it by saying I'm from Clonmel in County Tipperary, and we all talk very fast here, Keith. So, so it's a, it's a thing. Um, but just, just to say, with the Mad Tea et etiquette, what's going to happen is 
in a moment, we're going to pop up some slides with a question on it. It's a sort of a, a, a prompt. And what we'd like you to do is in the chat box, we'll pop up the question. You can put in the number. So like if you're answering question one, put down hashtag one and then your answer to the question. So the prompts for this one are to stay curious, dig deep and have fun. Uh, don't overthink your answers. It is literally rapid fire. We'll have 30 seconds and I'm going to have a timer here that will beep to remind me when 30 seconds is up um, and finish each of the open sentences with a short phrase. Uh, there's no need to mention any specific individuals or specific cases. Um, and if you don't want your name to attach to a particular comment, because we're very conscious this is a public recorded webinar. Um, so if you don't want your name attached to it in public, you can share a private message directly to myself. Uh, so it's Juanita Gaidra. So in the chat, uh, the other thing to mention, and this is very important, is there's a spelling and grammar amnesty in play. There will be nobody judged for there, there, or there. Um, it's whatever you want to pop in. It's as fast and it's as furious as you can. Um, and you'll hear go when the next question comes up. OK, so we'll get started. We'll get the recorder ready. So given that our purpose is to generate more positive engagement, what's the one thing I do to spark more positive engagement in meetings about quality and patient safety? You can pop them into the chat. And we'll go on to the next question. The one thing that inhibits me from engaging with your colleagues at meetings about patient safety. So one thing that inhibits me from engaging with colleagues at meetings about quality and patient safety. So this is number two. Fear, I like it Valerie. <laughs> Okay, and we'll go on to number three. As you can see, this is really fast. So number three is uh, given the purpose to generate more positive engagement, one thing that helps me get my mojo back is. Brilliant. So we're going to go to number four and number four is a place where I have more freedom and responsibility for results is. So a place where I have more freedom and responsibility for results is. And number five. So number five is given our purpose to generate more positive engagement, all I want is. Brilliant. So that brings us to the end of our mad tea. So there's some really, really, really interesting answers there as we look through this. Um, and thanks everyone for your honesty. Um, it's interesting just to see sort of some of the comments coming through. I don't know if people want to take just a second to just scroll yourself through the chat to see what people have responded. Just take a second just to scroll back up through it to have a quick look. Keith, do you want to jump in there? Is there anything you want to say on the mad tea? Uh, it's one that wasn't published in the original book because it was difficult to say what it does. Like, what does okay. it make possible? So here I'm trying to get a better name for the, for the activity, for the liberating structure. What do you think? We say it rearranges uh, a funner, uh, deeper, richer context for taking action. So primary, you know, now we're thinking it should be done maybe before or as a, you're about to think about what action might you take? That's way too wordy. <laughs> so if you say something good, I'll use it in chat. Yeah, I, it's interesting. Hazel O'Brien came in there just to say it allowed for lateral thinking. Um, and Adele mentioned self-reflection. Um, and it does definitely tap into both of those things. 
the one thing that I found really helpful with it is it allowed team members to get to know each other a little mm. bit more. Mm. So at the end of our very serious questions, you know, uh, on whatever topic we might have been working on, we'd often put in something like, what's your favorite biscuit? You know, mm. a bit random, mm. but, uh, you know, or one, of, one, one thing that you like about. Um, and, and it does, it does, you know, one thing that I like to do in my spare time is mm. it just allows for a different type of conversation. Rob, do you mm. want to come in there? Yeah, that I was going to say something similar that I think, you know, particularly when, when you do this sort of in, in person, like it's, I'm always amazed at the things you discover about people and it, it just, it, it, it humanizes everybody in the room and, you know, creates, creates these connections that you never knew existed. Um, and that then sows the seeds for, you know, emergence of new ideas for empowering people to be able to contribute. It's, a, you know, it's a, it's. It is it is quite mad in terms of the you know when, especially when you do it in person there's a, there tends to be a lot of laughter and in, in, in the room, but just as a you know as as a, a an exercise for energizing everybody it's a, it's it's a great one. Yeah, and just to say when we've done it in the room, you have two circles, an inner circle and an outer circle, and the the people move from person to person, and each there's a person in the center calling out the questions, or they might be up on a screen, but everybody moves in rotation around. So you're getting to meet and have a different conversation with people as well. Um, okay, what we might do now is go to Bernie. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna have, I suppose, a conversation. This is called Wise Fish. And basically, it's a it's a combination of user experience, fishbowl, and wise crowds. Just to say that anybody that's interested, there is an app, and there is a website, and there is a book. If you're interested in finding out how to do these, and they have all of the instructions in it. Keith took us through that sort of circle in terms of you know how do you participate, how do you invite people into the space, what do you need, what questions do you ask. They're all set out in each of those, and you'll be able to access them if you're interested in using these with your own staff or a variation or finding out what other ones might be of interest to you. Um, but this particular one, Wise Fish, we're going to take down the slides in a moment. And what's going to happen here is we're going to start off, and Bernie is going to introduce. Uh, a challenge and it's a case study. So I should say this is sort of a it is a, a, a case study example that we're using today and based on her experience. Um, so and, and she's volunteered very kindly to participate. So thank you, Bernie. Um, and, and we're going to start off um, this particular conversation with just Bernie telling us um, in two minutes, describing the challenge that she has at the moment and uh, a little bit about the help that she's looking for. Thank you, Anita, for volunteering me. <laughs> Thanks, Bernie. <laughs> And thank you. This is a wonderful opportunity. I know you, you talked about expert lists, but there are many experts in the room, so I'd be delighted to tap into that expertise. So in my role and function, I'm a project manager and I've been approached by um, a senior manager, a new manager to a team to um, work with the team. It's an established team in older person services and it consists of clinical, managerial and administrative grades. So there are a number, there are limited opportunities within some of the teams um, to capture uh, staff QPS ideas and for this to act on those um, ideas and, and generate improvements within the organization. Understandably, decisions go through higher through levels of hierarchy, which creates some um, bottlenecks and some challenges for, for staff. Items such as HICWA have reviewed, have identified areas for improvement, and there's always areas for improvement within our organization, such as person-centeredness, health required health care required infection rates and high transmission to emergency departments, etc. The request is from the senior manage manager that I will um, work with the team to review the current processes for capturing staff QPS ideas and acting on them. So really reviewing ways of working within the division, working with key stakeholders, streamlining work processes, that will be the, the sort of ultimate outcome, devolve decision making, work towards devolved decision making um, authority and auto autonomy to the most appropriate level within the organization. Increasing autonomy within the team and create a collective leadership style of management within the division. My plan to date is to schedule a scoping out workshop with key stakeholders, a group of around eight to 10 personnel initially follow up meetings to progress with possible work streams or possible ideas and projects that might come out of that. The challenges will be stakeholder engagement, which I envisage, and um, creating an ownership that the team will, will generally own this process and own the outcome. So your expertise and expert less tease will be most gratefully appreciated. 
That's brilliant. Thanks very much for that, Bernie, and beautifully done within two minutes. So thank you for sticking to the time. Makes my job a li little bit easier. What's going to happen next is, and just to say that Bernie is sharing an example, usually if you're doing this, you're doing it with a, a, a live challenge or an issue that somebody has, and the people sitting around the Bernie will then have an opportunity to then ask some clarifying questions, which is what we're going to do now. So we're going to ask Bernie some clarifying questions, not prompting questions. We're not we're not looking for the answer in the question, but we'll we'll hand over now to my colleagues and see does anybody have any questions for Bernie? Bernie, one of the things that I was uh, just wondering about, just in terms of just to get a, a clear picture of the the structure in which you're you're working. So, are are there existing um, sort of meetings or fora or opportunities where lots of different staff can come together? Uh, within, with uh, you know, with, within the kind of structure that you have at the moment, um, within that team themselves, I'd be coming in as an outsider, so I wouldn't be involved in any of those teams. I'd be coming in as an outsider to facilitate this change piece. Mm -hmm. um, but the teams themselves do have management meetings. They do have quite okay. structured management meetings. Mm -hmm. So, what what is a structured management meeting if they're focused? Uh, what is one of what what is one of those meetings like? Yeah, could you tell us? Um, about that? As an outsider, um, I would, but but I do have experience um, of working in the organisation, so they would be very agenda focused, um, poss possibly. And this is no criticism, um, because it's delivering services. They're quite challenged with time and with meeting QPIs, etc. So the space for being innovative and for creating um, opportunities for change to occur may not be necessarily um, available or easily achievable. Understand. Matthew, anything from you? It's one thing I'd be interested to know is how how well you think from what you know all the different members of that older services um team how you know are they all very aligned are they all very aware of what the other people all around them are doing or is there even room that that could be sort of improved i, I think there is it's possible that that each are busy doing their own job and that there is some interconnectivity but but again as i say busy doing their own job and um, minding their own quarter so we've we've designed services to be a little bit like that. Is there Thanks. any particular challenge that they're working on at the moment that's taking up a lot of their time or is frustrating for them? Um, no, I, well, I, I, I'd be afraid to sort of guess that. Um, I could do, but I could, be, I could be way off the mark. Okay. I think some of the challenges may be that lack of autonomy that, that our systems do create. Um, again, understandable, there needs to be a hierarchical structure. All health services do operate within that, but there could be some issues around autonomy and, and having that space and that freedom to be creative. Okay. Are, we're, are, we're just... Again, okay. Time. Yeah, no, we're just coming just to, just to the end of the time boundary there. So what we're going to do now is, Bernie, you're going to turn off your camera and go on mute and just to listen with a pen and paper in your hand to see if there's anything in particular from the discussion that you note. Rob, Matthew, Keith and I will keep our cameras on and we're going to have a conversation um, about the challenge um, and see if there's anything that we can maybe offer mm -hmm. some suggestions on. Hmm. And I empathize with Bernie being the outsider, uh, you know, hello, here I am. I'm going to fix you. <laughs> yeah, that, that resonated with me as well, that, that, you know, she used the term being, being an outsider and, and certainly to me, one of the challenges is, you know, to, how do you, how do you shift that? Um, you know, that, and it's not that you're trying to become an insider. It's more that, you know, how do you show to demonstrate to people that you are empathizing with them, that you are there to not to come in and sort of dictate change, but to support people in or give, you know, empower them to be able to make the changes. And so I, I thought one, you know, uh, you know, if, if 
if I were faced with a similar situation, I think one of the first things that I would be doing is probably using the the um you know the simple ethnography liberating structure, so which is a fancy word for going and actually sitting down observing the system close at hand, talking to people saying, you know, well, why do you do things in, in this way? Um, and really to put that time at the outset to get an understanding of the, of, of the system. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder intuitively, uh, when I have uh, done some infection control work and tried to prove liberating structures work first in hospitals, so little familiar with the, the challenge and but counterintuitively we had to uh describe and it could have been with simple ethnography like the problem is actually worse than you think <laughs> <laughs> the focus attention we needed to we were working on superbugs you know c diff and uh methicillin resistant staph aureus and things like that and so we we needed to like make the problem or look at the problem in a way that everyone cared about it more. And then immediately, uh, I would show up as the stranger, not only, not even in healthcare, you know, but here, I, I'm here to help. And typically what we would do would be to invite whoever really cared to spend 10 minutes to learn a couple liberating structures and go out to the unit itself, get out of the management unit. Go to the unit and ask, you know, how can we be sure that everyone, and this is Triz, uh, you know, I know you use Triz, go right onto the unit, almost uninvited. And you know, we may have told the manager we might swing, you know, somebody might swing by today and, and ask whoever's right there, uh, how could we be sure that every everyone who left this unit left with a superbug? That's making the problem worse. That's amplifying before you can actually get people to take it on. Uh, and, and that was purposeful. I mean, the answers to that question are the things that you need to uh, stop doing, right? It's actionable. Once you find out what are all the ways that we could uh, give everyone a super bug, you, you've got to stop them. I mean, at some point, you, all groups are a little self-destructive or, or a little unintentionally counterproductive. So anyway, that's, I think, getting over that, getting out of the management meeting and getting those folks into the, right onto the front line and yeah. amplifying a little bit the problem. There's something coming up for me there. You, you, you know, you talked about making people aware of the challenge or an issue. And I think, you know, the user experience fishbowl, whereby people who have maybe experienced the impact of a superbug or a family member sits in the center and the staff have an opportunity to hear about their experience um, and you know what impact it had on lives might be something that would be useful as well. There's something else co also coming up for me around the autonomy piece. So if, if autonomy is an issue, you know, is there a sense of learned helplessness whereby people have always done it a certain way and now we're asking them to take on you know, more? Is there something around that that would be helpful to break that down a little bit or to you know, have a different type of conversation with staff about it so that they know they have power or autonomy to do some more of this work. There's, there's something I might add uh, kind of relates to autonomy and which maybe could be done in parallel with the more liberating structure stuff. I was just thinking that there's something uh, called conversations of interdependence, which isn't which isn't actually a liberating structure, but it's where you get people. It, it relates to one of the liberating structures around relational coordination and really increasing that quality of relationship across the silos. And there's there's just a set of five questions that you put people into pairs who maybe aren't so well connected and they just go through these questions in a discussion. And it, it starts to build those links across the, the, the boundaries that are often there. And that could be something that you wouldn't have to do yourself because you, you could you know, get other managers to do to set up those little pair discussions separately. And it would just kind of make the whole thing a little bit more, more likely to succeed because without relational um, the relational coordination, often things don't quite get to where you want them to go. So that, that would be one sort of almost like parallel um, suggestion uh, alongside the other things. Yeah, yeah. I, I think one of the things that <clears throat> that 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 Rita touches on, Matthew, is that the is that you know we've mentioned you know a bunch of potential sort of liberating structures based or or you know liberating structure like 
um, uh, 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 things that, that Bernie could try in 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 uh, in this situation. But I think one of the key things with this is that it's it's not that you're saying you know like here here's the box of liberating structures cards. Bernie, take these and go in and go in and fix it. It's more about you know finding the levers that you can pull so that the people on the ground can actually they're, they're empowered to understand what they can do. And and as you know, um, you know, as as, as Keith has said, equally important, what can they stop doing? Um, and that and I think that's I, I think that's one of the things that that you know with with liberating structures that that you know and, and you know I've I've you know, I've, uh, Keith, I've heard you talk about this before about the idea that you know they, you know, with some of the structures where, like with Mad T, or where you know you're posing a question, like say with one two four all, the 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 critical thing is not the you know is not that 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 you get to look at all of the answers. The critical thing is that you're asking the question, um, and it's the you know it's the interaction between the people in the system. Um, that you know, I, ideally, you want to sort of just set up the conditions for change, for emergence to happen, so you can then then step back. And the other thing that strikes me with this as well, and I, I know, I know, I mean, we you know you've you've used Triz quite a lot, which is you know this sort of reverse engineering um, approach where you try to create the exact, you try to, you know, you, you theoretically fun. create the the the, the opposite of yeah. what you're trying to achieve. Um, you know, and and the it, it's not that you sort of you go in and you just do one and then you do another. It's that you know you can one can follow from another one can happen at the same time. You can be looking at your at your system and talking to people and sort of saying, oh, you know what, let's try something here. You know, um, and uh, so they they and I think with with a lot of of the liberating structures type approach. It is this sort of you know you're feeling your way through and you're sort of rather than following a a, a very specific set plan it's you know and, and it's you see what emerges as, as you go along as you come there's something coming up for me as well about whenever we've done tris before one of the things that i found is that stopping a tris is never enough you need to look at the 15 percent solutions or what are we actually going to do with the information we have otherwise mm -hmm. everyone goes away very depressed so yep. there's something about that that i think is sort of sort of important um mm -hmm. You know, and there's a few comments coming in there on the chat as well. So asking the unexpected person mm -hmm. what they think the issue is, you can discover the identified issue is as a result of a response to an unidentified mm -hmm. piece. So the unusual suspects um, and mm -hmm. shadowing or walkabouts to try understand the system and talking to staff. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, yeah. Um, Just for, for Bernie, her uh, selflessness <laughs> in showing up on the unit is important. And when we were. We did three big uh, multi-site research studies with liberating structures and uh, eliminating superbugs. And one thing we found in each local setting, each unit, we wanted to make progress, uh, but we couldn't use the same approaches. Different things worked in each okay. unit. And we really, we may have been working in three or four units at the same time in one hospital, but all we really needed was one unit to make significant progress, measurable progress on, are we eliminating uh, the transmission of the superbug? And once one unit started to do that, the other managers of the other units would go over and like, what, 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 are, you, what are you doing here? Yeah. What are you doing Positive here? Deviance. But they, each, well, they may, may have been using discovery and action dialogue or TRIZ or, uh, one surprise was uh, improv prototyping. Over lunch with an audience of 200, we went in and did four scenes uh, illustrating what the challenges are and what you could do to fix it. And uh, that made a huge difference to go to where the people were and address, we were addressing things like, what do you wear as you transport a patient? What about the doctor who wants to come into the room that says, I won't touch anything. The doctor's okay. pretty powerful. You know, what are you going to say? So we did a scene on just what do you say when they're at the door? What do you have to say? Yeah. What are you going to do? And I'm, yeah. I'm very conscious that this conversation could continue. Um, mm. But in terms of the time, we're just a little bit over. Mm. So we might go back to Bernie um, mm -hmm. and just see, does she have any other thoughts to add in based on our conversation? So Bernie, if you'd like to join us again. Mm, okay. Right. Firstly, that was really, um, really positive to have the 
the, to be muted and have the camera off because I couldn't inter. I had to just listen, and that was really powerful. Um, for me, you, you picked out some of the things that that do home through. I suppose it's about generating an empowerment within that team, but doing it as an outsider is a big challenge. Um, and that's, I think, going to be my key challenge, really. I like the idea of the 15% solutions, because if you get something positive coming out of any meeting, then you get, you, you sort of win the crowd a little bit. Um, and also, I suppose, the, the idea about um, going out to the units or going out to the areas that are delivering the services or reaching as many people as possible in some way to find a creative way of doing that. Remember, this is this is in a community setting so you have a large geographical area so it's not always easy to reach people in those sort of working environments and it can be elements of lone working as well so it's very challenging to get engagement there um but all really positive stuff um and thank you for that thanks very much for that bernie um it's the sort of thing that with this particular one we could continue to talk about yeah. and, and and definitely i think the more that we sort of elicit the conversation you know, gems, as they'd say, you'd probably add to them. Um, just in terms of Rob, Keith and Matthew, is there anything you wanted to add in just as we finish this particular structure? Bernie, I addressed the, uh, the training needs or like the simplicity of a liberating structure when you're not in a setting where everybody's collected, just use it say, can you do that? Can you, can you do what I just did? And so you recreate, you want people to copy what you do and don't do anything that's so complicated that it can't be copied by somebody in that setting. Mm -hmm. And it's really tempting because you're a pro, you know, you're trained within an inch of your life. I'm sure you are. Don't use it. <laughs> don't, do the, don't do the thing that you know best, which is to be the expert. Mm -hmm. As I wave that's, my finger at you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things that that uh, very uh, sage piece of advice that I learned from uh, uh, from a, a, an expert in this area, namely uh, Juanita, uh, which is don't go in and sort of say we're going to do liberating structures, you know, or you know Sorry, we're going Keith. to do we're going to do a Russian um, uh, you know reverse engineering uh, uh, concept called Triz. No. <laughs> It's just, it's as you know, it's just. Let's try this, you know, and 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 then if somebody's interested, you can sort of say, oh, well, by the way, this, this is actually I didn't make this up. This you know is is a thing from from liberating structures, uh, but you know because people can get um, a bit scared off by you know when you by the technical language. We love them, but anyway. and you can you can also <laughs> pop. Up I was going to say you can always pop along to Q's Liberating Structures user group or the, the Scottish uh, group and just try something out there before you use it in the, you know, out in the in the real world. You can mm -hmm. kind of it's a kind of safe place, really, a sandbox or whatever to use them. There are these different places. So people really kind of find that valuable because you can make the mistakes there. It really doesn't matter at all, does it? And, uh, and if you've never used it before, then, you know, you'll have used it once and it's 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 easier. So there, there's, you know, at least a couple of places where you can just try them out, whatever you whatever you've got in mind. Yeah, um, and I'm not sure if you can still hear me of uh, just a bit of technical stuff going on here, but um, definitely I think our learning has been we generally getting straight into the work has been the piece that has been most beneficial. Um, and I definitely think having something tangible that people can take away and do today and then that builds a bit of momentum and then there's a greater sense of engagement on the other pieces of work that you might need to do but tackling something that is a you know causing me the most grief that's why i was wondering about that is there something there that's causing people a lot of grief is often a good starting point we might look at the next 15 percent solutions piece so this particular one we're just going to pop up on the next slide if that's okay and the question there is um, a 15% solution, it's something you can do right away without needing any more freedom, resources, permission, authority or control, it's something you can do in the moment. And given what we've talked about today, what's one thing you can do right away where you have the discretion to act right now? Um, one of the things that I know you had said very earlier on, I think Keith was, and this is in a previous conversation that we'd had, was that if you have the same people and the same processes that, you know, and the same structures, the thing to change is the patterns of how we relate together. And that always stuck stuck with me. Yeah, what liberating structures are uh, rules that establish a new pattern. So yeah. 
deliberately but ironically we're changing the rules that drive the pattern okay so we might go on to the next slide if that's okay and just as people pop their questions into the chat box would you like to take us through this a little bit or maybe touch on one or two of the pieces of it Okay, Juanita, you're asking me to be expert about this slide. Uh, no. so I'm going to ask you some <laughs> questions back. But one thing I'll say about it and I'll give you a chance here. Everything I learned uh, in my management training, my organizational science work uh, as I was coming up is how to organize things on the left side, you know. My job is to define roles, manage conflict, tightly structure. I'm going to simplify. I try to find the similar, socialized, similar values. Um, find the best optimal choice. There's one if you look hard enough. Yeah. And um, a lot of this was, it was just baked into me. You can forecast the future. You, you can get the future, you have the vision of the future, and you just move there step by step. Yeah. It's generated a whole set of problems and a whole set of good things, but the problems, the patterns in our training and how we think is mostly there. And so liberating structures and the science or logic underneath it is all on this ecosystem metaphor side. Uh, the, the equal and opposite thing is also true. So how can you lead or manage you know, you've defined roles, but really you're working on the interaction of the people. How do you really uncover paradox? The first question that you asked here, how do we have more uh, autonomy and more responsibility? Those things go together? Are they, it seems paradoxical, but no, we're uncovering a paradox there. How, how does that, how does that work? Matthew and his work, it's all about loose coupling. What are the informal communities of practice that you can connect. Incredible, powerful, incredibly powerful. And um, so uh, liberating structures, you, you really have a different <laughs> set of fundamental beliefs about how people organize. And Juanita, why do you like this diagram? <laughs> I, I think I like this diagram because I think one of the biggest learnings for me in this particular work um, I would have been very much, very much on the left, you know, very clear role. And, and I do think, I do think there is a place for that in healthcare. I think there's times when you do need to have a certain amount of that um, because we can't function really without it. But I think probably my greatest learning is being uncomfortable with the unknown. Um, before, if I was meeting a group or I was meeting a staff member, I would feel I have to have all of the answers prepped and ready ready to go um, at the very start and, and actually sometimes that's not helpful and it actually inhibits the creativity and it inhibits engagement um, but it took me a long time to realize that um, so I find this really good as sort of a place where I might want to work on so relationship building you know uncovering that paradox being comfortable with the paradox um, trying to make sense of things so sometimes you know we, we have a very you know clear picture in our head we need evidence and we do need evidence but sometimes a two minute conversation with three different people can give you more information so that sense making can actually be incredibly valuable versus the yes or no answers that we might see in a typical survey um and the improvising you know that sort of that that sort of sense and, and maureen finn who's my lead would always say you know you act your way into a new way of thinking you know that sort of sense of we do a pdsa cycle we'll test it and we'll see but it doesn't have to be perfect to get started um, so that's why that's why I like that list, Keith. Um, and it's giving permission, I suppose, to to be in that space of the unknown. Um, obviously, with the direction in mind, you have a strategic goal. You know where you want to maybe get to, but but how we get there, being a little bit looser around that, so that we have we we've scope to work on it. Yeah, I, I have to admit, I I go back to this slide all of all of the time, um, because the you know that list on the left is very much how we are how we are taught, how we are trained, not just in healthcare, but even you know in our okay school system it's, it's 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 very much that that sort of machine metaphor but it strikes me when you look at this slide and you go back to bernie's uh, description of you know the her case presentation uh, you can you can pretty much map everything on this slide to what bernie was describing and the you know and the, and it's the the goal is not to not to shift from this to get rid of the stuff on the left and only have the stuff on the right it's you know 
because you need both. So it's how do you have the stuff on the left and the stuff on the right? And, and that's, as, as you said, Juanita, that's, that, that's getting to the heart of the, the paradox. That's why liberating structures has a, has a paradoxical title, you know, uh, you know, how can something be structured and liberating at the same time? Yeah. It, because it is, it's because it's, it's paradoxical. And, and it's so, so it's, it's getting, as you said, it's being comfortable with, uh, you know, with, with not knowing and, and working towards that, that and of, of, of having both. Brilliant. Um, we're just coming towards the last few minutes of the, the session. We might just go on to the next slide and thanks very much to everyone for that. Just in, in terms of the resources, because I really don't want people to leave without the resources. Maybe Keith, would you mind taking us through some of those? And maybe Matthew, you might like to share a bit about the queue. We can go on to the next one again. Thanks. Yeah, so they're they're here. These are links and I don't know if you can get, I don't know if you can get participants to this material or not, but uh, there's a book, there's an app. It's in a dozen or more languages now. Uh, there's user groups all over the world. Uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, th that's a great place, as Matthew suggested. There's a Slack channel if you're hopelessly into it. Uh, there's a Slack channel for people who just love it. Uh, we do all kinds of fun things there, develop new liberating structures. Um, and uh, there's design cards that you can use. So there's there's tons of great re resources. And I'm pretty accessible. If you write me a note, I respond always. There's one written resource that I didn't see from Canada. They did a wrote an article called Frontline Ownership. Uh, ownership. And maybe it's in your materials, Juanita, but it's a great, great uh, research study. Yeah, we th that's how we got started, actually. Dr. Michael Gardham and Leah Gitterman um, mm -hmm. came to Ireland in about 2015. And uh, they introduced us to uh, liberating structures, and that was the start of it. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so that's definitely an article we can share. It's um, it was one well, the, the stories I'm telling stories. are about Michael Gardam. Uh, you know, in particular, he's a character. So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah well, we we had the, the the pleasure of working with them here in in, in Kerry. Um, so just just at this point in time, just to say, and and Matthew, do you want to talk just for a second about the user group with the Q community? Yeah, so there's there's a monthly kind of first Thursday of the month uh, liberating structures user group, very much a safe space to, to try them out together. Sometimes new ones. We're doing one next month called Myth Turning, which I'd never heard of, which must be very new and definitely not in the book. I don't even know if it's on the website, um, but we're trying it anyway. But there's so that that's every month. And then we have a we have a planning session, you know, every, every six months where people can kind of volunteer if they want to try out a, a new one or something. But but Scotland as well, liberating structures. Scotland was also a couple of members were both keen on liberating structures so I brought them together and now now there's been a group going on there so that's another place where um which I sometimes go along to but it's it's you know go along to both go along to lots there are there are people that work with Keith that that offer sessions um Fisher and so on as well and you know there are there's free training actually well sometimes free sometimes cut price that happy happy courses do they, they do liberating structures the NHS people uh, that's that's either free or sort of half price or something like that um, I, I was just about to paste that info in the Liberating Structures user group to let people know the kind of code and what's coming up. So there are all these kind of places to kind of dip your feet in before you take the plunge, but taking the plunge is great as well. Yeah, and I do think one of the things to say to people is you don't necessarily need to do a course. You can literally look at the app, you can look at the website, find something that the things that I started off with were one, two, four, all. It's a really simple one. It's really straightforward. Um, impromptu networking. So taking something simple like that that you're comfortable with and say, OK, I'm going to test that and try it with a group um, and just get stuck in. It is it, it does change. The dynamic change the topic of conversation um, and the type of conversation that you're going to have with people. Um, just to say thank you so much to our panel. We have one or two more quick slides to pop up just to signpost our upcoming sessions. So the next session that we have is coming up. Um, it's hospice friendly hospitals um, and that's in two weeks time and you'll find the details on our website so, and, and on Twitter so that you can register for that upcoming one. Um, and uh, the other thing to say, I suppose, as well is just to say um, all of the previous webinars are available online and you'll be able to access them. There's also some very interesting podcasts and um, YouTube clips with Keith if you Google them um, and you'll you'll find um, with all of this sort of stuff that there's a broad community there that are interested in this that you can tap into. You can follow us on Twitter uh, and as I said the national U uh, YouTube channel um, and thank you so much again for joining us um, and best of luck with this. Uh, we know that there's really good work happening out there at the moment. So if you're doing something really good, share it with us. We have our newsletter 
quality and patient safety matters. We're always looking for good stories that people are willing to share with us because that whole concept of positive deviance and being able to share the good stuff. That's how people can tap into it and learn from others that are doing this sort of stuff. So thank you so much um, for joining us today.